Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. Welcome. My name is Nada Hassan. I'm an artist and a big supporter of Dearborn Open Mic. Let me introduce Dearborn Open Mic to you for those who have who is the first time here. Dearborn Open Mic is a safe place where artists and thinkers can express themselves freely in a friendly gathering. Whether you are a beginner or a professional, everyone is welcome here and highly encouraged to participate. Dearborn Open Mic meets every, every third Wednesday of the month at the Arab American National Museum Library in Dearborn, Michigan from 7 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. So please join us if you're around the area and if you'd like to participate, please sign up at dearbornblog.com and you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, everywhere. It's easy to find us, dearbornblog.com. <coughs> Today we have a great line of speaker and, <coughs> excuse me. We have a great line of speaker, artists, and musicians. We also have space for open mic, so if you like to write even if it's your first time, we really highly encourage you to do so. Please sign up on the sheet over there and we can pass it around. And we'll have, we'll have a space for open mic before the music section. I want to thank you all for being here today. We are here to support local artists and intellectuals who happen to be Arab Americans. We are here to support them. But we are here because we cannot be back home. Home is for us because we happen to be Arab Americans, whether it's Lebanon or Palestine or Iraq or Yemen. Because we have left our country, and I don't know if we'll, we are fortunate or unfortunate that we live here now. We are definitely fortunate and grateful for this country and what, his, what it has provided for us. But it's unfortunate that we left home because it could not provide us with basic human rights in order for us to stay there and raise our kids there. Because of all the chaos, the corruption and pollution and carelessness of the dear, oh very dear politicians who have been clinging on with their claws and fangs to their chairs for over 30 years without making a difference for our country, but only paralyzing it and us with it. Today marks the 35th, the 35th day of the Lebanese Revolution. For the first time in Lebanon's history, people are standing up and speaking up against injustice with no fear. Today in Lebanon, in Iran, and in Iraq, people are standing up and all they want is their basic human rights. And it is not their job to come up with a plan or an alternative to the corrupt regime. Human rights should be given and not begged for. From here, from Dearborn, Michigan, to the revolting people of Lebanon, to Iraq, to Yemen, to Palestine, to Syria, and every country struggling for justice, we send you our love and support, and we tell you, please, please keep going, and we are very humble, humbled by your perseverance and power. Please do not give up, so we can one day come back to our country, to our home, to the warmth of the sea, to the smell of jasmine, to our grandma's freshly baked bread, to our grandfather's little dikene. Please keep fighting. So if we cannot come back, maybe one day we can tell our kids to go back home and live the life that we once had with our loved ones. Maybe one day I can apologize to the cedar tree and the Mediterranean Sea that I have left unwillingly. Please help us come back. And why we are here today, the least we can do is support our people back home. While we are here, let's make the best of our time. Let's get together, invite your friends and loved ones to join us here at Dearborn Open Mic and enjoy a lovely evening of arts, music, and poetry. Our first talk for tonight is by the title, Trans Revolution, Syria in the Hearts of the Diaspora by Professor Hani Bawaddeh. Dr. Hani Bawardi is an Associate Professor of History in the Department of Social Sciences and Principal Member of the Center of Arab American Studies at the University of Michigan Dearborn. He is the author of The Making of Arab Americans from Syrian Nationalism to U.S. Citizenship. 
Please help me welcome Dr. Henny Bawadi. Good evening, Mexico Belkhair. It's good to be with you tonight. Um, I think uh, Nada did a great job in setting the tone for my comments tonight. Um, I decided to abandon my notes and that doesn't mean I'll be shooting from the hip. Um, this is the fruits of uh, about 10 years of research. Um, uh, the aspirations that Nada expressed, which speak for all of our aspirations regarding going back to a homeland of ours, um, has been in the making or basically unfolded about 100 years ago or over 100 years ago. So what's happening right now in Lebanon, in Iraq, uh, in fact, the Arab Spring, which seems to be in, in hiatus right now, is a, a sort of picking up the slack where we left off right after World War I. Um, I'll be throwing a lot of information and dates at you. Some will, look, will sound familiar. Others will be brand new to you. Um, so namely that after World War I, um, the British and the French got together even before the war ended and decided to chop up the uh, Levant between them. Sykes-Picot Agreement, I'm sure you've heard about that. And our aspirations at, as expressed by Nada, as expressed by all of us at times, have been in suspension since that time. So my talk tonight will be about um, breathing life into our view of history as we know it, as we learned it from our parents and grandparents about a Syria for all of us, a Syria that expands from the Taurus Mountains in the north, at the borders of uh, Turkey, all the way to the Sinai in the south, and from the Mediterranean in the west, all the way to the Syrian Iraqi desert in the east and uh, Arabian desert in the southeast. All of that is Syria, our Syria, inclusive of Lebanon, inclusive of Palestine, Jordan, which did not exist at the time, and Syria proper. Um, I'm going to sound like a Suri Qaumi. Um, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. What does it matter? In fact, uh, Palestine, where my parents were born and raised, for a time was known as Southern Syria, Suriya Janubiyya. So we cannot forget these things. We cannot forget who we are and what events unfolded that kind of put our aspirations for a homeland into remission for this long. So this all is a reminder that you know, the Syria we left behind was one contiguous cultural unit, Bilad al-Sham, as the Muslims uh, call it. It, it has within it Arabic-speaking people, uh, including Armenians, who were welcomed and made the place their home, Kurds, Christians and Muslims of all denominations, um, and even Jewish people who lived there in peace, and if you went there in the 19th century, you could not tell a Palestinian from a Jew or a Syrian from a Jew. In fact, a large uh, Jewish uh, community still live in Damascus and elsewhere, as Arabs. We're not giving those guys up either. We lost the ones who lived in Iraq because of Zionism. So we'll get to Zionism also. So um, I have a lot of documents, so I'm going to do like a little show and tell. So uh, I, they are in protective sleeves. You're welcome to examine them. I'll pass them along to kind of um, commensurate with my comments about different stages of Syria's uh, um, development or lack thereof. You know, our development was kind of went into remission because of colonialism. So we, our grand and great grandparents awakened to an age of colonialism that basically uh, sent them into the diaspora. And here we are in the diaspora hoping ever since for a homeland, a place we call Syria. Uh, now Syria, we attach it to the country of Syria, but I will be uh, sharing reminders of you that we're all at one point. If you came from any part of proper Syria, Lebanon and Palestine and Jordan, you identified yourself as a Syrian. 
uh, the reason why I'm, I'm not actually um, this is not a, an ideology I'd like, ideology I'd like to kind of spread around. This is a historical fact. It, this is no challenge to the Lebanese national identity at all, or Palestinian national narrative at all. But this is the foundation, the grandfather of those, you know, uh, liberation movements as we saw, uh, as we know them today, for reforms. In fact, the word reforms was at the tip of the tongue of every living. Uh, Levantine Arabic speaking person during the period. They all fell in line behind the need for reforms. Their first concern was to get rid of the um, regression brought about by the decline of the Ottoman Empire, which was like a very slow, painful process that lasted about 100, 200 years or so. During that time, uh, the Ottoman Empire fell prey to uh, European ambitions, and they imposed what is called capitulations, or economic treaties that were enforced upon them. They created the millet system, as if we needed them to do that. Behind all, all these you know, concessions that they made to the Europeans, there was French colonial designs. This is all under French and British pressure, who went to the Sultan, made the deal with the Sultan, in order to um, make sure that they gained a foothold where? Around the area of Beirut. Uh, so there was a large Christian population there, Maronites, which is an offshoot of Catholicism. Most of those guys were nationalists. You could not tell them apart from the general population. Very few became um, Anglophiles, which was fine, until the French began to claim 